All right, I'm over here in Streamlit, and I'm working through an issue where I have databases that live in my computer, and I want to access a specific database based on a dropdown. And so I'm specifying which database with this what direction dropdown, and I've got two databases, the buy side and the sell side. And then what I want to do is once I've chosen the database, I want to filter that database by whatever I specify here in the enter tickers here dropdown. And so I've selected the buy side database here. If I wanted to only see the records for A, B, and B on the buy side, I can choose that and it filters that out. Great. The issue is when I come up here to change that database to the sell side, you can see that it reverts this filter back to all tickers and it shows everything here. Ideally, what I would want is to have this stay on whatever I've chosen. So it would stay on A, B, and B, and I could flip back and forth between the databases. Uh, when I explored this, it seems like the uh, standard feature of Streamlit is for this to, to happen, right? And we'll show that in the video where <clears throat> when I normally, when you go up here and change this, this, uh, this box, it doesn't change any of the other boxes. But it seems like in this particular situation, it does. Uh, notice this is only when I'm bringing in the databases. When I create the databases manually in the code, we don't have a problem, and we'll show show that here. <clears throat> so I'm gonna walk through the solution that I, I figured out and uh, talk about how we can do that. To drive home what's going on here, you can see on the Excel file here that we've got that drop down what direction we choose either buy side or sell side, and that depends on that, which one we choose will determine which database goes to the streamlet. And then from there, we'll filter by the ticker. So the first thing I looked at was um, session state. And they talk about it in various places of the website, how to do this. And so basically, my understanding of what this is, is that this is a feature that allows you to, allows it to remember these certain uh, parameters that you've put in uh, when you go to rerun the code. I found it a little odd because when I started testing this, it seems like even without session state, it still remembers what those inputs were. So uh, I'm not sure, maybe I'm just not understanding something, but uh, even with the session state, we were still having this problem. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through some of the basic examples and show uh, what it does default, where it, it keeps those the same, and then we'll get to eventually work our way up <clears throat> to actually bringing in the databases from the outside showing that problem and then working through the solution. All right, so this is the very basic setup here. And what I've had commented out here is what the documentation talks about, where we have to initialize it at first. Uh, but maybe this is outdated because it didn't seem like an issue to not include this. Uh, it seems like uh, once we just put the key equals whatever that key name is and we run it, uh, we don't have any problems. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. <clears throat> We'll come down here and type streamlet run delete.python. We'll come back over here. And you can see here that we've got two drop downs, and these are the session states here. And so it's remembering what the most recent values were here. So if we change this to sell side, it's going to update to sell side. Um, but it won't update until it gets down in the code to this line right here where it re, uh, resets that value. So if we wanted to use the previous value in the code, uh, we could do it up here before we reach this line. So this first example I've set up, we've got a data frame that I've made inside of the code here. Again, we're not pulling it from uh, a database yet. We're just manually making it right here. And then what I've set up is two dropdowns that will filter this. Um, so we're going to have uh, some food items, and we have the color and the store. And so we're going to be filtering this by the color and the store. And so first part of this uh, on this dropdown, uh, what we can do, we have a lot of options. What they say is you, know, you have to specify what the items will be in the dropdown. But with the databases, we, what we want to have happen is we want it to look at the database column that we're filtering and say, just give me all of the values that are possible in there. And so how do we do that? Uh, first, what we're going to do is we're going to say, uh, we're going to 
placed the items inside of the column into a list and we've given it put it into color and then what we're going to do second we're going to use this list set and that's going to remove any duplicates the third thing we're going to use sorted uh, we've set sorted and then we uh, give the name of that variable and then reverse equals false this will sort it from a to z and then third what we're going to do is we're going to add another option here a default option say all colors in this situation okay and that gets us to where if we were to run this you can see right here we've done this for this one down here too so now our our choices on that on those drop downs are going to be blue green and red and uh, for the stores going to be CVS Walmart Whole Foods those are from A to Z and no duplicates so if we come over here to the code, we've got the database set here and it's showing every single record, all colors, and all stores by default. So when we go to filter this, we're going to filter by blue first. Okay, we see there's one record there. Let's do actually do red. So we'll sort, sort by red first, and then we'll come down here to the store and we'll enter uh, Walmart. Okay, and that sorted that further. And if we come back up here and change this around, um, it leaves that second filter intact. Okay, so that seems ideal, but again, this is a, a two filter system where we already have the database inside of the code, uh, different than what we're doing where we're pulling the database. Uh, but you can see with the two filters here, uh, there's no problem where it's resetting. So let's test out an example where we have two databases and one of those filters is switching back and forth between the databases and then we're going to have only one filter in this situation. So we'll go ahead and run this. All right, so this is going to look like what our final product is going to be, where we've got the one filter here switching between databases and the second one filtering it. And so you can see here we've got only one item in the uh, session state object, and we've got the full table here. And so if I come down here and choose a ticker, it filters that out, so that's good. And then we come up here and we switch the database. You can see it maintained at that filter status. So this is great. This is exactly what we want. Why can't we get this to work when we're bringing in the SQLite databases from an outside source? So here's the final setup. And this time, instead of manually putting in the databases like we did here, we're pulling them in from a .db file. Uh, and so I've gotten that set up here. And we've changed this around a little bit, but not too much. So we've got this selection box here, and then uh, based on whatever that selection box is, it's uh, pulling in or constructing the name of the, the appropriate name of the database. And then once it does that, it's making a call to uh, that database. It's, it's pulling that data, and then we're bringing it in through pandas.readsqlquery, selecting all the rows from that database table. And so that gets our databases in here. And then from there on, it's the same exact code where we're uh, formatting that drop down and then filtering down here. So we'll go ahead and run this. So I've got this open here, and you can see it starts out uh, by side all tickers. And then when we come down here, we'll choose one here, A, B, and B. Gives us two rows, that's correct, on the by side. Come up here to change this database, and it reverts back to all tickers. So let's go ahead and go through what I'm going to do to get this to work. So we're going to come here to where the dropdown is, this is the filter dropdown, and we're going to add a parameter here. We're going to say index equals, and this is going to allow us to, to specify what value we want it to stay at. And so we want it to be that previous value, and so in order to obtain the previous value, we're going to use that session state. So we're going to come right under here after we've you know, gotten the drop down in order the way we want it to be. To come right down here, we're going to say setting the uh, ticker uh, session state. We'll say if ticker. You can see down here this key. I have tickers with an S. That's not right. So we're going to say ticker. These two have to match. This is just a made-up name. This is what's going to uh, where we're going to store. 
the um, that prior ticker, and so we want it to sort of describe what we're storing, but um, it doesn't have to be any specific thing. So I'm going to just ticker if it's not in st dot session state. How they describe it in the documentation is we want to initialize it. I don't know that this is required anymore, at least. Uh, I'm going to give it a try, though, and we'll remove it at the end. So we're going to say, when we first load this, we want it to be on all tickers. Okay. And then the second thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to have, we're going to utilize this to describe the previous value. So uh, keep previous value. Where are we going to go to get that previous value? So like we talked about, in this code, when we change a box, it's going to rerun this code top to bottom, my understanding. And it's not going to change this uh, stored value until it gets down to this line here, in which case it's going to change it. And so since we're doing this before that, all we have to do is say, just pull that, that value from the session state, st.session state. Ticker, and that'll give us the previous value. Great, and so now you would think, okay, we're going to take this and put it on the index. However, the index takes a number, and this is a string, right? We're storing, let's say the ticker is AAPL, we're storing AAPL. It wants a number, uh, not that string. So what we're going to do down here is we're going to say index equals. drop down options dot index keep previous value and so what this is going to do is it's going to take the previous value it's going to come into that all the drop down options and it's going to find uh, what number it is in that drop down so if it's the very first one it'll return a number of zero if it's you know the fifth one it's going to return a number of four um, and it'll identify where it is and which ticker it is so uh, we're going to say index equals index right here. And now we're going to clean this up a little bit. What happens when we have two databases and they're not exactly the same? And let's say the first database has uh, AAPL in it. The second base doesn't have AAPL. Uh, so if, we, if that were the situation and we kept it like this, we'd have an issue with throwing error. So what we're going to say here is try to find the value on that list. If you're not able to, and just default to the very first, very first item, and it's going to be a try accept. So it's going to hit an error, so it'll throw to the accept. So and then so the very first one, because we set up here that that very first one to be all tickers, it'll show all tickers. All right, so I'm going to change this around a little bit. Uh, this goes against what the documentation says, but I think it's going to work. Um, so whenever the ticker is not in that session state, what do we want this to be? And so um, what we've said down here is that we want the previous value down here to be whatever is in there, but whenever this first runs, there's not going to be anything in there. So whenever it runs and there's nothing in there, use that first value. Otherwise, use whatever value is inside the session state. Then I'm going to add, make sure I add a comma down here, make those correct. All right, so let's go ahead and give this a run. Run it, and it pulls up. We're going to say streamlet run, name of the Python script. All right, so we're over here. You can see we have nothing initially in that um, that. Uh, session state and so it's defaulted to all tickers and when we come down here and choose a ticker a b and b it'll filter it right and then if we come here and choose that new database now it's keeping that ticker the same and you can look over here and see yep it's changing those numbers so awesome that that works great and now to show what happens when there's a ticker in the database that's not in the other one so on the buy side, we have AAPL, and then for whatever reason on the sell side, there's no AAPL in here. 
So if we come to buy side AAPL, and then we go to the sell side where there is no AAPL, it changes it back to all tickers.